You know how there are some figures that you just don't need, like a side character that's in a suit, or a slightly updated figure that was pretty bad to begin with, and it is still pretty meh. Yep, that was me when Mobius and the updated Loki were released. When Loki season one came out, I only wanted three characters: Loki, Sylvie, and He Who Remains, and I did get all three figures. I even made four different Loki displays too. Why am I bringing this up? It's because I've been trying to make a very specific Loki display for quite a while now. For those who've seen last week's video, you know that I've been trying to recreate the temporal loom room for a while. The most crucial element of this display is the loom itself. I've been thinking about how to make the loom ever since season two came out, and everything clicked when I found the perfect LED light tube. The ideas in my head started flowing, thinking about all the things I can add to my display, and how I should build it. And with the temporal loom complete, all I need are figures to go with it. So that brings me to today's figures: Mobius and Loki. I passed on the Mobius figure quite a few times. The head sculpt is pretty good, but it's another figure wearing a suit, and the accessories didn't look that interesting. The Tesseract Loki figure is even worse. It's essentially the Season One Loki without his jacket, and it was also significantly more expensive due to the life-size Tesseract prop. So I was never gonna get this one, but clearly I changed my mind. So what's changed? Let's deconstruct, deconstruct this figure. figure. First of all, Mobius is the perfect figure for my temporal loom display, and he can't go in there alone. Loki needs to be there too. I thought about using the season one Loki figure, but even if I were to repaint him again, he still wouldn't look like his season two self. His jacket is just too wrinkly, so I looked online and found that the Tesseract version is fifty percent off. So he ended up being a few dollars more expensive than the typical Marvel Legends. But hey, at least I get a life-size Tesseract that lights up. Speaking of. If you're into cosplaying or collecting life-size props, this is actually a pretty well-made tesseract. The downside is that it needs three AAA batteries, and it's a bit of a hassle to put the batteries in. The button to turn it on and off is also located on the inner sphere, so it is a little bit annoying to turn it on and off. But they did a really fantastic job with the lighting effect. They really captured that glowing effect from the movie. Pretty good for a non-premium prop. But back to the figures. The main reason why I don't love figures in suit is that I find them harder to balance, and due to the nature of the suits, these figures just can't do that many dynamic poses. But to Hasbro's credit, this figure is pretty well sculpted. I thought they were just gonna reuse the same body mold, but that doesn't appear to be the case. The only issue I see with the Mobius figure is that the suit has this rubbery sheen. The props are fine. I say fine because I feel like they would have looked better if there's something on the tempad screen, and some sort of glow effect on the time stick. The figure overall is actually decent, but the props are slightly disappointing. As for Loki, the figure looks a bit better in hand, and the hair here is better than the season one version. It's not flowing awkwardly anymore. I'm not a fan of the brown they used here. It has this yellowish green tint to it. The sword is a cool addition, but the black splotches are a bit much. But I really like how the flame effect looks on the sword. These two are perfect for the temporal loom display. But before I add them in, let me just touch up the figures real quick. So, hello, this is Ken. I like making things. Whether it's repainting my figures or making diorama displays, I love making things look awesome. My goal is to elevate my figures so they can shine on my display. Join my DIY adventure as I ask myself the same question every week: Can I make it? Let's start with Mobius. The 
brown on suit is not deep enough. It reminds me of those cheap milk chocolate candy bars. I'm going for that rich, exquisite velvety brown. As for the tie, it's hard to tell, but I believe it's greenish brown. There is a bit of a design on the tie. But unfortunately, for the greater good, I'm gonna have to cover it up. Mmm, brown on the suit still looks too flat. So let me add a bit more texture by giving it a quick wash with an even darker brown. A few more finer touches on the belt buckle. And it's time to work on Loki. Okay, let's fix that ugly yellow brown first. I'm going to use a warmer tone brown this time. Looking at reference images, Loki's brown is a bit lighter and warmer than Mobius. Loki's tie looks fine, but I also want to darken it as well. The design of the tie is show accurate, but I don't recall noticing the design when I watched the show, so I don't mind covering up with the brown. And the shoes. They look too squeaky clean, too shiny. I'm going to rub a thin, thin layer of black to make them less shiny and more leathery. As for the sword, I'm a bit worried that the paint will scrub off due to me taking it in and out of the holder. So I'm only going to do a thin layer of paint. I'll do that a bit later. Let me take the strap off first so I can paint his shirt. His shirt seems to change color depending on which reference image I'm looking at. In the behind the scenes photos, his shirt appears to be more blue, but that could be his updated shirt he wore in later episodes. In the beginning of the season, his shirt appears to be more grey, with maybe a hint of green in it. So I'm going to mix myself a grey, dampen my brush and let the paint seep into the crevices. And just a bit more to emphasize the folds to make him look slightly sweaty, like he just came back from the Citadel. And for the strap, it looks pretty dark in the show, so I'm going to paint it a darker leather brown. And just some final touches on the belt buckle. Okay, the sword. I want to reduce the appearance of those black splotches. So I'm going to rub a thin coat of gold over it. And before I work on the faces, let me upgrade the props real quick. In order to make the time stick glow, I'm going to first paint the tip white. Then I'm going to fake the glow with a bit of orange. Okay, I worked on it a bit more off screen. I intensify the orange even more and added a little bit of yellow as the transition color. It is not perfect, but it looks okay to me. As for the tempad, I printed out a variety of screens. It's hard to tell which one will work until I put it onto the screen. I prefer something more simple, like this one here with Miss Minutes, but I think the colors are clashing a bit too much. This one here ended up looking the best because it's easy to read and the blue stands out nicely against the rest of the tempad. On to the faces. Let's start with Mobius. Mobius is already pretty good. His face does have this plastic shine on it, so let me mattify it first. Next, his mustache is too light. According to reference images, his facial hair is darker, so let me darken it with a gray. And while I'm at it, let me darken the side and the back of his hair as well, so it's not just one color. And a bit of the same grey on the eyebrows. And finally, to give the hair even more dimension, let's add a tiny bit of white highlights. Okay, Loki's turn. I don't know how to explain it. He looks very waxy, almost like a mannequin. He kind of has this uncanny feel to him. 
Tom Hiddleston or Loki has a pinkish pale skin tone. I believe that's why his figures always looked weird. It's that they're all too yellow. But then the show is pretty washed out, so maybe that's why. I find people with pale skin a bit harder to paint, because that they'd be more subtle with the details. Otherwise, the strokes would become too distracting. I hate to admit this, but I personally do not love what I've done to the season one Loki figure. It's an improvement to the original, but I don't think I did that good of a job. And because of how similar this head is, I feel like this is my chance to redeem myself. I really want to do a good job with this face. My painting skills should have improved since then. But I also took a three months break from doing live action figures when I did the animated X Men figures. But so far, so good. Here's Mobius. The original head is good. They definitely captured his likeness. But it looked too plasticky. The painted one looks more like a real person. As for Loki, I don't know if he's translating on camera, but he looks really good in person. There's a bit of texture to his face, and he doesn't look like a mannequin anymore. I don't know if it's because I really like Loki season two. These figures look really good to me. Especially now that they have been painted with the right tones, I feel like it really captured the tones of the figures. The pinkish skin tone looks so much more natural, and his overall look is a bit more dirty and sweaty, like how he was in the beginning of season two. As for Mobius, the changes aren't as drastic. But the deeper colors definitely look better. I don't know if I got a bad figure, but the original brown looks so washed out. Oh, I also ended up adding a little bit more red to Mobius' face. When I put him next to Loki, their skin tones were clashing. Mobius isn't as pink as Loki, but both of them look more lifelike this way. What do you think? Do you like what I've done? Did you get this Loki figure, or did you skip it because of the minimal changes and the high price point? I like this Loki figure so much more than the one with the jacket. Maybe it's the hair, or maybe it's the paintwork, or maybe it's just that he's not wearing a jacket. But this looks of his just works. As for Mobius, the sculpt looks really good. The proportions are great. If I squint at the figure, he does look like Owen Wilson. I usually don't get too excited when it comes to figure in suits, but I think this one is one of the better ones. The only downside to these figures is that they can only do very limited amount of poses. Loki's gripping hand is also awkward when he's not holding anything, but I don't want him to be holding his sword 24/7. He randomly ditched it in season two, but he does look pretty good with the sword though. Mobi is even more limited when it comes to posing. But the glowing time stick adds a nice warmth of color to the figure. It looks more interesting now with the glowing tip. The temp pad is also an improvement. Mobius is no longer looking at a blank screen. The only thing is that it's hard to find a pose that shows his face and the screen at the same time. And with these two painted, I can finally add them to my temporal loom display. The brown suits look really good against the green setting. But this still doesn't look that epic. I want more. I'm gonna add a bottom floor to this display. I want to capture the feel of season two, and I have the perfect idea in mind. I'm almost finished with it, so that'll be next. For now, let's end this for the photo shoot. Mobius and Loki are arguably just B or C tier figures. They aren't that special or amazing. It's one thing to paint awesome figures like the Legacy, Deadpool, and Wolverine, but it's a totally different feeling when it comes to painting mediocre figures. It brings me so much joy to see the glow-ups, especially Loki. Yes, he's clearly an action figure, but his facial expression makes him look very human-like, which I find interesting because the head is very similar to the Season One Loki figure, but this one just looks significantly better. 
Maybe it's just that my painting skills have leveled up since then. Did you get these two? If you haven't, are you going to get them now? Give this video a like if you enjoyed today's video. Subscribe to see me add them to my temporal loom display. For those who watch my stream will know what my idea is. And it's going to be epic. So until then, stay inspired and I'll see you soon. I can make it, so can you.